I just wanted to, to, to share some of how I come to how I how I come to, to, to writing and um, that is creative writing and um, and and maybe when you start to think about composing your your poetry you will you will, you will see that you don't have to go to an MFA program although I would suggest you do mm -hmm. um, but but for me um, I was going to be Africa's first opera singer and I I, I came about uh, doing the immediate er, er, um, era after, I mean, I come of age when Kwame Nkrumah is advocating for uh, a united, independent, decolonialized Africa. And one of the things that he said was, that in order to build this, this new Africa, we had to create a new, an African persona. And this African persona had to have three or four components. One was had to have an Africanized thinking um, uh, to establish his or her self-identity, which is what later you hear Sanu talking about the decolonization of the mind and the colonization of the mind and how it continues colonialism, even though it's, quote, post-colonialism, period. Um, it's, so you had to have that. And in order to have that, you had to have two things. You had to have the person grounded in his or her culture, and you also had to have them educated, educated in the fullest sense of the word, from the African tradition to the now-imposed Western tradition, and that the, the role of the youth was to incorporate these two systems of education and go out, get this information, come back and bring it, as he said, and lay it at the feet of your grandparents. So we thought, ah, we're young pioneers, <coughs> that's what he, he called Africans of this era. So I, some of us, we were artists, we thought we were artists, the painters, People in that era were like Gladys <laughs> Glover from, from, from his country, a wonderful, who's still very much active, Gladys Glover, a painter, um, uh, writers, and so forth. Um, when I came here with my ex-husband, he was already in, in music, and he got me a scholarship to the New York <laughs> College of Music where he was attending. Um, but in 1960, something really bad happened. Patrice Lumumba was overthrown, and it was a very bloody situation in the Congo. And it, it, just, it just upended my world. It, it, not just my world, but for the first time in this country, there was a national demonstration of African students. And I just got swept away in that. Now mind you, I'm, I'm, quote, I'm going to be an artist, so I'm very separated from that, even though I'm supposedly this Pan-Africanist and Nkrumah has told us. So I eventually had to, I stopped music. And I thought that I needed to do something that would be more immediate that I could participate and help. But this artistic urge was still there. So I started, I was doing this anyhow. I had always been writing, but not writing like. I, I just would jot things down. Um, and suddenly then this writing that I was doing, closet writing, became much more urgent. So for me, my writing has been it's absolutely, almost totally, my own creation. And I've created my own techniques and devices. Some of it is based on, you know, the more structural things that you learn about poetry in general. But, but traditional, but I think I follow more a traditional uh, path. I use the system of origi, the phrasing, the, the metaphor. I use, I use much more um, uh, that, uh, that, 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 context that, that I mean that's 
that that kind of frame for 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 my for my writing. So for me, writing is extremely organic. I'm always writing. I carry little notepads. I make I make uh, I make uh, little notations. And right now, I'm doing a, doing a whole bunch of little things that I call um, Afro Af Afroisms. You hear, especially in, in Harlem and in black communities, you hear people say things that are, that even though it's in English, you, you know you you know it's African. And so I write it down. I had this one thing, and then I'll, I'll finish. This this woman, she looks like a quote bag lady. So you walk away from her, huh? and she's muttering to herself. So I got a little closer, and she said, uh, they, 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 think, "They think they white, but they ain't white. But they, they but they white. Mm -hmm. They white people." I knew what she was talking about. It doesn't make any sense if you don't understand. If you didn't, if you didn't see her and know she's black, huh? And know how she hears in the street. What she's talking about is a commentary of the street of what she sees. But if you abstract it, it has no no interconnectivity. I wrote that down, and I just found that very interesting. Or well, sometimes you hear. Yo, and a person say, yeah, and you say, what it is? Ain't nothing. <laughs> but, it, but ain't nothing is a lot, right? Ain't nothing is the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. Or they may say, everything is everything. Mm -hmm. I love it. I used to always try to, to, to do African American idiomatic talk. I would always get it mixed up. So now I write it down and I remember it and I don't, I don't, I don't mix it up. But I'm just saying that we all carry around with us these, 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 these words and these expressions from whatever language we speak, from our grandparents, from the elders we hear, from the children we hear in the street, from the snippets on the radio, on the television. They get lodged here in this marvelous computer, the best computer in the world. It never throws anything out. It never deletes. And, and then sometimes when you're writing, it opens up a path, and you find yourself pulling an image or a word or a phrase that you don't even, you wasn't even in, 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 in the thinking that you sat down to write. So those, those are sort of how, how, how I approach writing. So for me, writing is my own creation, and I, and, I, and I didn't go to a creative writing program. And so my poetry is my own creation. I, I, uh, my stories are much more uh, African storytelling method, meth method. Even my novels do not follow necessarily the Western arc, you know. So, that's that's just my 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 techniques. Yes, I I found a I find a lot of similarities in in what you're saying, and and, and first I want to say that it's, it's it's really great to be at the Africa House yes. and having yes. this, this this conversation, this yeah. Pan Africanist uh, uh, conversation, and thank you to uh, Kinsley for welcoming us. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started poetry by reading poetry. Yes, reading. I, I, it's funny because uh, 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 my brother was uh, uh, reading novels. Naturally, I, I was just reading poetry. I would be, uh, you know, uh, on my side, uh, uh, just, just this quiet uh, uh, time. But it's what talked to me. It, it really... Um, Talk to me, and you were talking about the African personality that uh, mm -hmm. uh, that um, Nkrumah mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the others were looking for. Of course, on the Francophone side, because I'm, I, 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 I'm, I was raised in in, in Côte d'Ivoire and spent all my life in in, in Côte d'Ivoire uh, until I started traveling. Um, it was the Negritude movement, of yes, course. Yes, Absolutely. And uh, so that's also what uh, mm -hmm. what fed me, and also uh, oral tradition. Yes, very much. Because uh, if you if you if you uh, have an opportunity to listen to uh, Leopold Sedar Senghor, mm -hmm. he will confess how much he was influenced by uh, oral tradition, 
And uh, that was, I, I mean, that, that was great. That was a, a, a great uh, source of uh, inspiration. But also, the poets, uh, the French poets, uh, like uh, Prévert, Césaire, Rimbaud, I, I read them with passion. And uh, it was... Uh, Yes, uh, Damas, Damas, but they, 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 uh, they I, I would say they the poets of the Ninguitude movement, yeah. but then you had also all the surrealist yeah. poets yeah. of, 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 of uh, I mean, the, the, the French poets. Mm -hmm. So this mixture was, uh, I, I thought, um, was, was very en en enriching. And uh, I consider myself as, as a poet, although at some point I was angry with poetry in the sense that it didn't work for me anymore because I've got a problem with the the uh, collection, the collect, the collect, the conventional collection mm -hmm. of uh, poems. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, poetry is something that is so much uh, alive mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, must go out there. Uh, that um, uh, I'm very happy with what is happening at the moment. Mm -hmm. Is that with this, uh, w with the fact that. Uh, you have uh, uh, movements like the spoken word. You have young people taking poetry back mm -hmm. and, and sending it again uh, uh, in the streets. And starting this conversation, I, I, I really am very happy with it. So anyway, when I was kind of not sure about the, the collection of, of, of poems, conventional collection of poems, I decided to put ev uh, poetry everywhere. And uh, so I ventured into prose, but it's not prose, <laughs> knowing that I would remain always a poet. And I'm unashamed of that, uh, uh, in the sense that uh, I, don't, I don't write conventional novels, because I can't write conventional novels, because I, I write lyrical novels or poetic uh, novels. And you know, sometimes I despair. I say, well, I'll never. I'll never make it because it's, it's not commercial. It's too hard. It's too it's too dense. But then I've 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 I've, I've decided that's the way I am and that's the way I will be. <laughs> so I I also find poetry in the uh, books I write for children because if I know one thing is that children are our masters because poetry they you know it's amazing how their minds. Uh, uh, work and, and what they can say is so full of poetry because they haven't been formatted yet by, uh, by, by society. So they've got that freshness that sometimes we lose with time. So I've got a lot of uh, respect for, for children and also I like their ability to work without borders. You know, you meet uh, uh, children uh, here or in Africa or in Europe, and they've got that ability to cross the borders and and, and look at uh, you or look at whatever is uh, is, is is written with no <laughs> real, you know, uh, hang-ups, and, and and I like that. And so I put poetry also in in the visual arts. I, I, I do some, yeah. some, some painting, and, and I don't know, if you, if you look at poets, you'll find out that uh, very often uh, poets and visual artists go hand in hand, mm -hmm. uh, because it's like you're putting uh, signs on the page or signs on a canvas, and it's very dense uh, language. Uh, and I think that's the thing about uh, about uh, poetry is the, the density of the language. You've got to go straight to the juggler. You, you don't have, it's not like, yeah. it's not like a, a, a novel where you have pages and pages, yeah. space. Right. No, no, you've got to yeah, exactly. uh, go straight. Uh, exactly. uh, and uh, yes, that's, that's what I said. The hardest thing, of course, is to find your voice. Mm. I think that's the hardest thing because sometimes when you read, there's the danger of imitating. And so you've got to read, but uh, you have to read as a writer. You, 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 cannot, uh, you cannot be someone else. 
you, you, you have to be yourself. And that, that's the, I find that's the hardest, hardest thing to do. But uh, my mother was an artist and I remember even painting uh, and drawing. I can't draw to save my life. Yeah. So normally I shouldn't have been a painter. But I will remember when I, I always remember, and um, uh, I was very uh, uh, grateful uh, to her for that. She, she, she would just say, do it. Just do it. And I think the fact of saying just do it means that you, 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 you are forced to find your own voice. And, and probably when you have doubts, that's what you must tell yourself. Just do it. Even if it's, you know, just go ahead, do it. And, and, and this is something that uh, at times I've, uh, I've tried to, to do when I am in, in doubt. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for, for your, the conversations that you've had with us. So this is now time for questions from you, the audience. I would take about five questions. Thank you very much. This question can go to either of the uh, ladies here. Um, what language do you write in originally? Do you write in your own language and then translate to English, or you write in English directly? And what language do you think you used to think? My question follows up very nicely with your question, so I would like to add it. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what are both of you talk about your multiple travels, and I know in both of your work um, across time and space, you have the, the question of migration and mobilities has been really important to both of your work. So I would love you to comment on that and, and give perspective on that. Thank you. Well, that's a very interesting question. Um, as you know, in my in my bio, I was born in in Dahomey, which has become Benin. But the traditional name is Daomi. Daomi. Yes, we are the same because our two countries, Ashanti Daomi Empire, <coughs> when it split, a slither became Daomi, and the rest became Gold Coast. So <coughs> we have we have this kind of culture. My on my mother's side, I'm related to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, so. So, so, so language, especially in our in the Guinea Coast, language is is multi is multi tongued but also uh, 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 multi multilingual, but but also very problematic. And, and so, because the borders, you can walk from almost the whole goes uh, Guinea Coast except when you get to where we have the little ferry for passengers. <laughs> I mean it's not that it's not that much. But you but if you go up north you can walk you can walk into it. So 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 we've got this kind of fluidity where language crosses as as Hilary says, crosses borders. And so language is not restricted. But with the imposition of, of Europe of Europe, um, in, in, in in the case of Daomi in seventeen eleven, um, we, we found ourselves, if you went to Porto Novo, the, 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 the Western language was Portuguese. If you went to Cotonou, the Western language was French. If you just walk a little bit, you get to German, because the Germans took a sliver in between, in our, in, when they decimated the country. And so you have people speaking the, tr the mother tongue, but also speaking the, 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 the Western tongue. So, Africans then created a language, a lingua franca, if you will. We have a Koyo English, or in some cases, a Koyo French. But even in the French-speaking countries, the, the, the Koyo English, which some people call Pidgin, we, we, can, we can speak this language, but not necessarily speak French, German, or Portuguese. But we speak this language, and it is influenced by the, the, the mother tongue of the people. I think, I think, in, in, my, in, my, in, my, in my grandmother's language, which was Hmong. But, but Daomey also has a strong 
in Yoruba culture, but we call it Nago. And the Nago <coughs> is the Yoruba. So the Yoruba became dominant because when they cut, the, when they created the border, it cut in, in the Yoruba country. So the bulk of the Yorubas are in Nigeria proper, but the fountainhead of the of Yoruba is in is in is in Dawi. So 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 you have to imagine that we are multi multilingual. For me, I think I just think in an African language in the sense of con of, of language. I write in English because when I was little and I was writing in French. I had a, a traumatic experience where the, the nun uh, caned my hands because she thought that I was writing very, uh, I, it would almost be like pornography. I wrote about somebody kissing. I was about seven or eight. I'd gone to the cinema. It was my first time seeing a cinema and I saw two people kissing. So I went home and I wrote my first story. It was one page and I wrote about them kissing. And one of my cousins found it, took it to the, to the school, and, the, and they called the special assembly, and they read this thing in French, and everybody was shocked. And they made me come up to the front of the assembly, and she came with my head. And she did like this, up and up and up and I never wrote in French again. Till now, I don't write in French. So primarily, I write in English but I try very hard to think of English as a translation from another language. So for me, English is a translated language. Yes, um, I, I, I write in, in, in French because I was schooled in French, I read in French, I learned to read in French, and also I guess because uh, it's, it's my mother tongue and because my father didn't bother to really uh, teach me his language. Uh, so I don't speak it well enough to, 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 to write it. So I, I would say that I've always written, uh, uh, written in, uh, in French. Uh, I've been comforted by uh, our predecessors like uh, Achebe uh, saying, you know, do what you can do best. Uh, if that's it, the if, if it's the language in which you're comfortable, do it, uh, and if it's uh, something else, another language, I, I like that. I like that very much because it freed me and, 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 and took the, the shame of using uh, uh, an imported language. Uh, uh, and and uh, yeah, again, it's, it's, you have to learn to accept yourself and to accept the fact that you can also contribute and uh, hopefully, you can, because sometimes we get bogged down by this conversation, and to sometimes to an extreme, because uh, 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 people tell you, why are you not uh, writing in your own language? And uh, you want to turn around and say, you mean all the people who have been re writing in French up to now have done nothing? <laughs> you see what I mean? So sometimes you have to be very careful uh, and, and, and uh, you have to work on several fronts as well. You have to work on developing um, literature in, in indigenous uh, languages, especially the big languages. You mean uh, Zulu, Akan languages? You know, so we can we can have a better vision of uh, of the continent. But you must not be locked. You must not be a prisoner, and and, and see your inspiration uh, cut short just because you you're not PC. <laughs> you see, yeah. 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 I think, we, I think what, what Veronique is saying is important because mm -hmm. Edward Said mm -hmm. talks about yeah. this very much and I thought mm -hmm. for me when I read that it really it really does for me what you're just saying about freeing you. He says use their language. It's utilitarian. It's not the language of the master anymore. Yes. When I I mean just that one sentence, it's very important because you do right from a very complex. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, I didn't have a glass, but to your question about, about traveling, I think, um, yeah, I, I, in my case, um, uh, when my grandmother died, I, 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 I was forced to go um, um, 
to, to, to school, to uh, boarding school in France. Um, because uh, in, in, in Cotonou, there wasn't really a school at my time. I'm going to be 75 in, in July, so it, you know, it, it, there was not a school um, in, 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 in the Muslim uh, Ummah that, 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 would, that, a, that a girl could go to. And even in the, the, the others, I mean, the missionary schools where I got caned, very difficult because because the pressure is so great to convert to Christianity, even though they say they're not going to do it. When the mother superior or the priest would come into the classroom, everybody had to get up and say, you know the prayer, you know the prayer. It's like, that for me is blasphemy as a Muslim. But I have to be polite, so how do I, what do I do? So they get up, I would get up a little bit later and I would say, I should do that. And and so you 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 learn you learn simultaneously subversion while you're trying to be quote educated. When so, so these things then I had a didn't have a wild upbringing because out of the car into the boarding school the doors closed you go to your classes every fortnight my uncle would come. Of the out of the school, into the car, out of the car, into his house. Very wild time. <laughs> but when I came here, I was quite young. I was 17. And, 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 and here, here there were no borders. There, there, I mean, there were borders. I'm, I'm talking about personal borders. So I didn't have I didn't have a collective community in the sense that there was the old woman who sat at the head of the village who noticed everything everybody <laughs> did. And before you could get home without telephone, especially cell phone, everybody knew what you had done, who you had been with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't have that kind of thing. I was, quote, free. But it was like a satirist condemned to freedom. And, and so I didn't know what to do. So subsequently, I didn't do very much. Well, I was working illegally and going to school and, and, and being a mother. That was one border. But, the, but, but I think just meeting everybody and then, and then finally saying, OK, I better create a village of my own. I better create a family that I can feel supported by. And in that sense, I've been very fortunate. Yes, those things infect my work, and they do come into yeah, just to say two words about traveling. I think I, I, I travel because I'm a better writer when I travel. And, and, and writing is traveling. It is, it is, it is uh, inventing a, a, a new world, going to see people and, and trying to find the commonality, commonality, what we have in common. And that's what fascinates me. And, and I, at the end of the day, uh, it's, it's, it's just a question of context. Because you know, death, love, you know, fear, uh, or, or even violence—all that is is, is is something that we have in ourselves, but that changes with the context. And once you've understood that, I think you 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 learn more every day. And and, and I think traveling for me is very 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 important. It really enriches uh, my 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 writing, and uh, I can almost put a little flag on uh, each of my uh, uh, books, which corresponds to uh, where I have been and the people I've met. Uh -huh. So there's this interesting African saying, when you are talking with the mothers, they always like to pour everything they have to you. <laughs> and so you, know, you can see it. I will take two more questions. This question is for Rashida. Well, both of you really, but you mentioned being a closet writer and also being unconventional. And I, I'm curious as to what the process has been to take you from being in the closet to coming out. And also if being unconventional had any effect on your um, confidence as a writer and also coming out as a writer or sharing your work as a writer. And both of you can you know, answer the question if you'd like to. 
my question is on writing process, creative process. How do you, how does the idea come to you? How do you work on it, uh, write and edit? Just your own process. So before you answer, thank you. Uh, my question is, what does it mean for you to be a woman and a poet in Africa? Because. Um, <coughs> I schooled in Nigeria and it took a long time for me to know that a woman poet exists. Looking at the critical canon, we know the discourse of African, modern African poetry is always on men. So what does it mean for you to be a woman and a poet? Okay. Who else wants to ask a question? They asked. Uh, this is just a question about education and uh, <coughs> whether you feel that poetry has an important role in the development of the decolonialization. Good question. Uh, okay. um, well, speaking to uh, being in the closet, um, um, I, I had heard I had I had heard that that there were there were I, I like like Veronique I read a lot and so I read the poets that I read I tried to find out something about them and one of one of the poets I can't remember now but it was this person said that he had a ritual every day he would get up uh, at the crack of dawn and he would just write he would just write and he made himself write for an hour and put it away. So I did that, and I did that for about, I don't know, four years. And then I had another, I, I read, I heard somebody else say, whenever I'm walking, I try to think about, I try to create a story about the people that pass me, the people that come near me, and then I, I write that down. So I was writing things as conversations with people that I wasn't having and responses to, to situations that were extremely new, and I didn't know if they were dangerous or not. So I, I was writing, not quite a lot, but writing. And, I, and so I never shared that. Um, the, the, the conventional, I guess you mean, uh, the more formal way of writing, that, I just got that because you're in academia, you see how poems, poems are put on a page and constructed, but the poetry that you're used to hearing in your ear from, from the tradition is very different from what you see on, 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 on the page. So I, for some reason, I, I understood that. And I just started talking, in a sense, my, my poetry, because I was um, not quite out in the world, so to speak. So I was spending a lot of time alone. And so that's how I, I, I started writing. That's what I mean about being in the closet. I never showed my work to anybody for at least, I would say almost 10 years while I was doing all this stuff. I read it to very select people. And it's well, it sounds like poetry to me. I know, okay, maybe I am writing poetry. <laughs> I think sometimes just to add uh, something, Sometimes you have to, you have to kind of uh, uh, find out if you're ready or not. Uh, I, I remember writing poetry when I was much younger and leaving bits of papers everywhere uh, with my, my poems. And then I had an opportunity to be published. Uh, uh, and that was in, in, in Côte d'Ivoire. And I, I kind of suddenly had a big fright, really, really big fright. And uh, I realized I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to let go of these poems because I thought they were not, they were they were they were nice, but they were lacking something. Sometimes I I feel I regret it a little bit and feel what would have happened if I had done that at such an early age. Maybe I would have been somebody different. But at the same time, I am still confident that uh, I wasn't ready yet. Uh, and and what I know is that once it's on paper, once, once it's published, that's it. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> huh? you, you, you have to let it go. So you have to be very careful in that sense. But I think it's something that you sense. 
that you're, you're, you're ready or you're not ready, but you probably can't, uh, can't rush it. <laughs> you asked the question about poetry being used for decolonization. Um, I, and and you, you, you phrased it in the context of education. I, I, I assume you mean curriculum? Is that what you're talking about, or pedagogy? I guess I'm just wondering if you feel that, that it's important that education include a way of using poetry in Africa as a way of working on the decolonization. And if there's a role that can be played within the formal educational system. Well, I think that's an interesting question because having just come from the Associated Writers Program uh, AWP conference, they were also talking about the same thing, and that was in the Western context, that poetry is not is, is usually, poetry within the cu educational curricula is usually one of the last, one of the first things to be cut and one of the last things to be included. But in African context, it's very different because when you're in Africa and you are being educated, you're in the very source area. So it's all around you. Sometimes you don't even realize it. So you've got an African, an African frame, and then within that frame, you have you being educated. But the education that you that you that you're experiencing um, is 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 what is is boxed, is framed, is framed by whatever Western um, country or, or or language that 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 that. You that, that you're speaking. So yes, it can help with the decolonization, but I think what, what would help the most is if we, if we don't praise the Western education and poetic forms over the traditional African forms, that they have equal footing and that they have equal value. And that's what I think will, will, will lend itself more to decolonization. I think and poetry it, it would have a very important uh, uh, role to play in education. I think we should fight to get it yeah. back, uh, give it more importance, because it's another chance. You, you, you're giving uh, students another chance to find a way of expressing themselves. Uh, when I've tried, uh, when I'm, I'm teaching at, I was teaching at Wits University uh, in Johannesburg. Sometimes when we went into creative writing and, and, and poetry, suddenly you rediscovered your students. You know, those that were not doing that well, suddenly you say, wow, you know, they've got this gift that is kind of dying uh, because of this conventional, strict, uh, academic uh, a way of uh, looking at competence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I think it would give uh, a lot of students another chance to, to, to kind of uh, flourish as opposed to being in that uh, uh, straight jacket. Yeah, it would be good. And then as for being a, a woman, a woman, uh, poet, a woman poet or a woman writer, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, still 80%, I could say, uh, 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 canonical texts are, are by male, and male writers, and not just poetry, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, all, the uh, all the literature. So we still have a lot of work uh, to do, but it's kind of changing, it's, it's kind of changing, but probably too slowly, too slowly. Thank you very much.